we're gonna be showing you today of how to install an underlayment of nice and water on wall abutments. Hey Alex, why do you like the uh, plastic caps better than staples on the synthetic underlayment? Because they hold much better on a windy day, like today. We do not need three foot wide roll of ice and water shield against the wall. And so what we're doing, Alex is getting ready to split the roll in half. And what's needed is 18 inches of ice and water shield against the wall abutment. And Alex is getting ready to show you how we install it and why. What are we doing with the ice and water shield right here along the wall abutment? We're tucking it in behind our flashing so we're able to get a, a better uh, keep drying. Let me say that. So That's perfect. So we're going to, you're installing the ice and water shield underneath the 4x5 flashing so the water runs on top of the ice and water shield. Any nails penetrating that flashing will be sealed with our ice and water shield. Now, Alex, why are you, explain to me why you overlap the synthetic, uh, or forgive me, why you overlap the ice and water shield right here, why that's sitting on top of the synthetic underlayment. What's your, what's your reasoning? So any water that gets behind a flashing can actually get on top of the synthetic and drain out to the gutter instead of getting behind our synthetic and getting into our wall. Now it looks like this ice and water shield that we have some sealant on the back side of it. So then this ice and water shield is actually going to glue down to the, it glues down to the decking. It's already sticking. So to, it will adhere to the decking, but now it's also going to adhere to the synthetic underlayment. Is that right? Yes, sir. That's the reason why we do it. The water is going to flow off of the roof and it's not going to be able to get underneath of the synthetic underlayment. So no matter what, the water will shed off the roof even if it were to get underneath of the shingles.